One of the most important questions I've been asked is what are the best investments to protect your portfolio? You see, strong risk mitigation is the number one factor in a portfolio's longevity and sustainability. And longevity is crucial, especially for retirees who plan on living off their portfolio's earnings. There are many ways someone can improve their portfolio's ability to tolerate downside risk. For example, you have bonds, dividend stocks or ETFs, or high income investments like covered call ETFs. And for those who don't know, I've talked a lot about covered call ETFs on this channel, and they are financial instruments that utilize a covered call strategy to generate income, which is then distributed to investors in the form of a dividend. And these investments typically have dividend yields upwards of 10 to 12%. Overall, these investments are tools you can use to help preserve your capital and safeguard your money from significant losses. But how do you choose the best ones? You see, during specific economic conditions, certain investments are favored over others. Now, you may be an individual who finds higher income investments more attractive, or you may be more conservative and look towards buying bonds. Typically, you will hear about the 50-50 portfolio, the 60-40, or the 70-30 portfolio. And these are all simply representing ratios of a portfolio split between equities and bonds. I also recently posted a video that discusses the impact of high income ETFs on a typical 50-50 retirement portfolio that uses the 4% rule. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest that you do. You can check it out right here. But overall, a portfolio of bonds and equities carry their own disadvantages, especially when you look at bonds. You see, bonds represent a form of debt. So essentially, when you buy a bond, you are lending money to the bond issuer, which could be the government or a corporation. And in return, the issuer agrees to pay you interest periodically, which is referred to as the coupon rate, until the bond's maturity date. And that is when the issuer will pay back the principal amount. So there are three different types of bonds short-term bonds, medium-term bonds, and long-term bonds. And they all have different interest rates in relation to their maturity dates. So in a healthy economic environment, the normal interest rate comparison between long-term bonds and short-term bonds typically results in long-term bonds offering higher interest rates. And if you were to chart their relation on a graph, with the x-axis representing the maturity date and the y-axis representing the interest rate, you can see a yield curve that looks like this with a positive slope. Now, I do have a video that goes through bonds and yield curves in details, and you can check it out right here. So you see, short-term bonds and long-term bonds do well during different economic environments. Typically, long-term bonds are favored in low interest rates and low inflation environments because they provide capital preservation with a high yield. Simply put, when the yield curve has a positive slope. Investors can lock in high rates for the entire duration of the bond, even if the rates decrease further. But the moment interest rates begin to rise, long-term bonds begin to lose value. And that is simply because the relation between bond price and interest rate is inverse. And that is why long-term bonds carry elevated risk, because they are very susceptible to interest rate hikes. This chart right here shows the impact of interest rate hikes on long-duration bonds and you can see the heavy downward movement. Therefore, short-term bonds become favorable in a high interest rate environment, especially when there's a risk of a recession, or simply put, when there's an inverted yield curve. When interest rates rise, so does the coupon rate on short-term bonds, as they are typically tied together. And what's really important to remember is that short-term bonds are low-risk investments, because your money is only locked away for a short period of time. So currently, interest rates are sitting at over 5%, and short-term bonds are providing yields at around 5%, making this the perfect hedge in a bear market and a recession. High income from the yield and short duration so you're not susceptible to any interest rate changes and price drops. But there is a big problem. You see, these rates on short-term bonds do not last forever. We don't know when the Fed will start lowering the interest rates, but the moment it happens, you can expect the coupon rates in short-term bonds to fall. And this brings me to some of the major issues with bonds. Bonds lack diversity. Investing in individual bonds limits your ability to achieve broad diversification. And as mentioned before, there are a variety of bonds with varying maturity dates, credit ratings, and interest rates. But it's difficult to diversify in every single type, especially if you have a limited investment amount. And bonds sometimes have minimum investment requirements, making it even more complex. But most importantly, my biggest issue with bonds is limited liquidity. When investing in individual bonds, depending on the maturity date, your money is locked away for that period of time. And let's say you need immediate access to your money. 
Trying to sell the bonds on a secondary market can be very challenging. You could be hit with high transaction costs and large spreads and potentially lose a lot of money. And for those of you who don't know, a large spread is when the highest price the buyer is willing to pay versus the lowest price a seller is willing to sell is very different, resulting in high transaction costs. There's also other issues with bonds like overall management complexity. But the real question is, how can you still embrace the benefits of bonds while avoiding all of the other difficulties associated with them? This is where things get really interesting. This brings me to JPST, which is the JP Morgan Ultra Short Income ETF. This is a very unique bond ETF and is one of the most popular high income bond ETFs on the market. Similar to a stock ETF, bond ETFs are traded on stock exchanges, offering investors a much more convenient way to invest in a broad range of bonds without having to buy each one separately. And most importantly, bond ETFs are very liquid. You can buy or sell shares freely throughout the trading day, providing ease of management, and you have access to your funds whenever you need it. There are so many benefits like lower transaction costs and no minimum investment requirements. So now let's take a look at the fundamentals of JPST so you can get a better understanding of this ETF. This ETF was established on May 17th, 2017, and it currently has over $23 billion of assets under management. The fund currently has an expense ratio of 0.18%, which is fairly low, but compared to other bond ETFs, it is on the higher end. Now the best part, this ETF currently has a dividend yield of almost 5% at 4.84%, and the yield is distributed on a monthly basis. This ETF had one of the most successful fund launches in the industry, garnering a lot of attention from investors. Year to date, the fund has returned 2.58%, and since the fund inception, it has returned over 13%. And this is where I want you to focus on. As mentioned before, today's current high interest rate environment has increased the coupon rates of short-term bonds. Looking at the fund's dividend history, you can clearly see the rapid rise in its dividend yield since 2022, exactly correlated with the rise of interest rates. Now, there are other bond ETFs that focus on short-term bonds like SGOV, and you can see the same thing happening with its dividend yield. But JPST is rather unique mainly because its dividend yield is relatively higher than others, and we'll talk about why in just a second. So how does this fund work? This ETF focuses on generating high current income through investments in short-term investment-grade fixed securities while managing credit and duration exposure. Okay, so what does that mean? Essentially, this ETF aims for income generation by focusing on bonds that have a good reputation, aka credit rating, and that are considered safe. Then it tries to control risk exposure by managing duration, and that is why the fund has a relatively high turnover rate of 70%. As a result, the fund primarily invests in short-term investment-grade securities. And when you look at the fund's holding breakdown, you can see that 85% is allocated towards bonds that have a maturity of less than one year. Short-term bonds are a lot less susceptible to interest rate changes, that is why when you compare it to other ETFs that are focused on longer duration bonds, you can clearly see the difference. Notice how the fund does have a smaller allocation towards longer term bonds, with almost 15% in one to three year bonds and 5% in three to five year bonds. So this small allocation gives the fund a little bit more interest rate risk compared to other short term bond ETFs like SGOV, which is strictly focused on short duration bonds. And this results in a yield that isn't fully dictated by the federal fund's interest rate. When you compare the charts side by side, you see that JPST has a little bit more fluctuation. This is why the yield on this ETF is relatively higher than other short duration bond ETFs like SGOV. This also allows the potential of capital appreciation because as mentioned before, bond prices are inversely related to interest rates. So if interest rates begin to fall, well, then you can expect some modest appreciation in JPST. Overall, this ETF offers exposure to short term bonds. And because of the rapid rise in interest rates, investors can use this opportunity to invest in short term bond ETFs as it is a great form of capital preservation and income generation. And that is all for this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye.